Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. William Goldman once said of the movies, nobody knows anything. Well, the 2008 presidential election on the eve of the Iowa caucuses, the nobody knows election. Nobody knows which Democrats or Republicans will win place or even show in Iowa. Nobody knows who'll win New Hampshire. Nobody knows which candidates will be ultimately nominated as their party standard bearers. And no one knows when these races will be decided. But joining me are two people who know an awful lot about politics and elections. Hank Scheinkopf is a noted political and public affairs and governmental affairs consultant. He's worked in campaigns in four continents, nine foreign countries, and 46 states. He was a key player in Bill Clinton's 1996 presidential campaign, and he's also an active member of the Chattering Classes, an often quoted analyst and commentator. Jerry Skernick is a partner in Prime New York, a political list and consulting firm, a former aide to Mayor Koch, and a keen student of local, state, and national politics. Welcome back, Hank. Jerry, it's a pleasure having you here for the first time. This is a crazy election. We're a day before Iowa, and nobody knows nothing. What's going on? First of all, explain the Iowa caucuses to me. I don't get it. No sane person would invent this way to begin a nomination process. Hank. Theoretically, you could argue uh, that it is a way, Doug, for people to get together in someone's homes and make a very good American constitution. <laughs> You You're just decision. bullying me. Get, Absolutely get bullying to it. Well, well, that's what it actually originally yeah, was, but then it was. it was bastardized by the media into this sure. crazy thing. That's good. Jerry's right, and, and it is crazy. And, and you have, you I know, agree. Once you but have, don't blame the media. In 2000, you had uh, 87,000 Democrats, and I think under 60,000 Republicans vote. Yeah. And that's to wait, determine wait, wait. what occurred. They didn't vote. Well, participated. They participated. That's Forgive the first me. part. It's, New Hampshire is bad uh, enough. At least they vote. Okay. Hey, explain true. this, particularly on the Democratic That's side. That's right. Right. The, the crazy caucus system. Jerry, explain how nutty this really is. All right. There, the first thing you have to understand for this year is that if the president, if the Democratic presidential race in Iowa is as close as the polls indicate, that the candidate who has the most support may come in third, and we will never know it. Correct. That's number one, because it ha part of it, the Democrats, which are worse than the Republicans in this case, right. is they have sort of an electoral college kind of system where you can get 1,000 votes in Cedar Rapids, and it's worth as much as 11 votes in some, you know, rural community where there are 12 Democrats. Right. And Okay, so they get together at 6.30 at night. They have coffee and cake. They talk about their candidates, and they, they go into separate parts of the room, and then they count them up. And the wall and, shutters in the meantime. Right, right. and the wall shutters in the meantime. And if they get 15% or above, they've made the threshold. But those candidates, or those people who are standing for candidates, under 15% have to migrate to those who already have. Or leave. Or, or leave. Yeah. And at the end, what are they choosing? Well, they're choosing delegates to a county convention. How did this lunacy occur? You're saying it's the media. I, rem I don't remember it before Jimmy Carter. Well, well that's what happened. Jimmy, what, what happened is I, I was always, like a lot of states, they've always had these kind of caucuses to select delegates to their local conventions, which then select delegates to the state conventions. Unlike New York, a lot of more Midwestern and rural and Southern states actually have significant conventions. One year they decided to have like an unofficial poll for a presidential race, and in 1976, Jimmy Carter's campaign decided to make this a test, a test case of who would do well. Actually, I guess 72 it started first. Mm -hmm. yeah. 72 is the first year it, it started, and but the media sort of reported on it, and the fact that McGovern did a little better than expected, but they didn't make a big deal right. about it. But 76 was... In 76, and I think what happened is Carter's Carter. campaign somehow snowed people in the media. 
into thinking it was important. They had nothing but, better but to do prior to New Hampshire. Jerry's right, but there's another element Go involved ahead. here, which is that the media needs to do something. Right. And, and conflict bored. is what creates democracy and creates news. Therefore, if you create conflict and you create something that doesn't exist, therefore it becomes important. Okay. So the importance of people meeting in someone's room of the house in a place we don't think about, someplace in America that can control world politics is out of this world. It's, okay? it's, it's Only nuts. in America, it's my nuts. friend. And, it's totally and, the, nuts. and the reason I say to the media is responsible for this, Pick on for them. some reason, these multi-billion dollar corporations have decided we don't have enough money to cover all the candidates who run for president all year. So we'll cover them sort of on and off the year before they run. But then once January happens, we're going to not we're going to knock it down to three or four candidates. We're going to eliminate candidates and we're going to stop covering them. And when you stop covering them, it comes to self-fulfilling prophecy. People don't vote for them. And so that's what happened. There's no reason why, you know, Rupert Murdoch has billions of dollars. He can have a full-time crew covering Dennis Kucinich until he drops out. It's, I mean, maybe he shouldn't, but he could afford to. They've decided they can't. Right. Their news budget can't afford it right. because, you know, they have to so have, they, they have to pay the paparazzi filters, to fire Britney Spears. Their okay. filters okay. and their framers, their definers. They are framers, without a question. Yeah. They define what is news. So a bunch of people no one ever heard of. And I said on this program, we last together, right. that, this election, that this election would be the one in the last 20 years, with the print press particularly, becomes more important than it has ever been because of the way that these primaries are stacked up in timing. Yeah, and, and electronic guys will take their cues from the absolutely, print press. Absolutely, and, and that's the case, this particularly the last, with the big papers. This and, is the last hurrah yeah, for the print press. Right, for both in Iowa and in New Hampshire. Okay, let's look at the Iowa caucuses tomorrow. Let's look at the Republicans and Democrats and divide them into two classes. Those who come out in a box, they're dead, whether they know it or not, and those who who survived. Let's start with the Dems. What? Who's dead? Uh, if Edwards doesn't win, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah. I mean, he he continues Or if on. he doesn't come on. Very, I mean, he's like one of those zombies who was shot in the head, but he keeps moving if for a while. If he keeps moving forward and he is within shot and loses, he's still alive. But if he comes in a distant third, he's, he's done. Dead. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Okay. Uh, Senator Clinton continues regardless. Uh, Senator Obama uh, continues because South Carolina is the great hope. Black populations in the South a fire are firewolf. Are firewolves theoretically? And so for Edwards, South Carolina. Ditto. But I, but again, he he gets shot in the I head here. He's, he's toast. Go ahead. Uh, with the Republican side. What about well Richardson Biden? I mean, we forget about their those. history. I, I mean, I would they say were history before they, they were. They were never history. there. Right. I mean, Kucinich will go on because there's nothing else. To right. Do. And it is cold in Cleveland this time of year. And and. And why you, go home? Why go home? When the money's free. I mean, free. you'd have to go to New Hampshire. But South Carolina and Florida Sorry. are okay. Okay. So we've got, we've got basically three possibility of three people sure. standing. Clinton, Obama, and Edwards. What do you think, Jerry? I, don't, I think that's, that's like no, it's not even a possibility. I mean, that's they, it. You know, as, as bad, hard as it is to poll in Iowa, uh, if someone's up by 20 points, mm -hmm. right. they're definitely right. going to come ahead. Right. They're going to finish yeah. ahead of the so guy you get, 21 you, points. You get so there's no tier. question those three Democrats right. are three who are going to be in double figures. I think all the other candidates, like you said, they, they, they may not be, know they're dead, but they're dead. Okay. And the only thing I disagree with was when you said they were dead before, because, you know, a month and a half ago, you would have said Huckabee, Huckabee was, was dead, dead before. Okay. So it's not impossible that Richardson or Biden or someone it's, might have come on. It just didn't happen. Reasonable, That's all. reasonable, yeah, reasonable argument. Yeah, except those candidates did not have the pre-existing well, dissatisfaction. Whatever reason, it didn't happen. happen. Okay, okay. you're right. Just, you're right. Okay, go to the Republicans. Republicans, similarly, well, it's somewhat different. I would say the top two candidates, which will be Romney, Romney and Huckabee, Huckabee, will definitely still win. The two candidates who are the national candidates who were not really competing in Iowa, Giuliani mm -hmm. and McCain yeah. are still alive. Other than that, I think the rest of them are dead. Uh, Stick a fork in Thompson. Yeah. And he's another one who wasn't alive before he was alive. He should have never left the DA's office. I know. He really was downtown <laughs> St. Andrews. He was much was better perfect. off. It was Come a better on. life. Come I mean, and you Look, knew this coming in. I okay. actually heard somebody talking about Thompson, I, speaking a couple of weeks ago, a national pundit type, and he said, you know, he met Fred Thompson and, you know, the way he is in law and order, you know, quiet, makes his, makes his, takes time to make his decisions, right. slow moving. He's not acting. And <laughs> that's why they call it 
running for president. He wasn't running. He was walking for president. <laughs> I, I disagree a little bit about Rudy, though. I, um, Go ahead. Look, the New Hampshire data is accurate. The more you know him, the less you like him. Oh, I, I, his, I, I've been saying since since September 12th right. that Rudy cannot win the Republican nomination. I still believe it. I'm just not saying. I'm just saying he's not dead. Okay. I think in this case, the original conventional wisdom, right, a year ago. Rudy can never get the Republican nomination because he's pro-choice, because he's anti-gun, because he's gay tolerant. I think, I've, tolerant. I think right. I've said that he was wrong. And the conventional wisdom about that he couldn't say. get the nomination was right at first. Right. And then after the f first two months in right. national polls, showing he was still doing okay, then the new conventional wisdom said we were wrong. It turns out they were right the first time. Right. They were right the first time, but they, they couldn't figure out whether Karagaitis would enter into Well, the, I mean, and Jerry, right, exactly. I mean, I look at his book, Leadership, in Chapter 5 as... Choose great people, and who does he talk about? Bernie Carrick. If I'm a damn, I'm do. You do ads. Well, Come I, on, I know I what I would them. do. I'm among the great people Rudy Giuliani wants us to have in public life. Bernard Carrick, you remember him? Indicted not once but twice. Okay, convicted. Had to give money back. And, and Cheated on is, his wife. Got caught. Then, but this is an you know, aspect an on, of on, Rudy on. Giuliani's leadership. Go ahead. Well, and last week's New York Times has this story. You know, no one. I didn't think anyone would pick up on it. Uh, they picked up on the story about what his firm had done uh, about oxycodone. Right. right. But the best part, I thought, was the picture they had of, of the conference room, and he's sitting next to Bernie Carrick. Yeah, I, I know. I saw that. I, pretty, this is, this is not good. Okay. Let's, let's climb away a little bit from the personalities and look at the strategy. Giuliani's strategy was an unorthodox one, if you will. S skip the earlies, skip Iowa, essentially, skip New Hampshire, basically, you know, give, give him South Carolina and Florida's the firewall. No, but you, a simple simple theory here, which is if you want money, rob a bank, don't go to a shoe store. Therefore, play the big game, okay, which makes you a broker at worst and a player at, at best. What, looking at it now, and I, I know it's ridiculous because the world could change tomorrow. Looking at it now, does it look like a wise strategy or does it look like the only real one that he had? I, don't, I think it would... It's a debatable strategy. I didn't think it would work, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Mm -hmm. It's never happened before that a candidate not competing in Iowa and New Hampshire has ever gotten a nomination. But, you know, so maybe what? it could happen. It's right. Other things not had. New Hampshire, you know, he was on and off whether he competed in New Hampshire. Right. And I think there's no reason to think that he could not have actually done well in New Hampshire if he was going to do well elsewhere. Correct. Right. If you agree with my theory that eventually... He yeah. wasn't going to do well because of his positions on the culture on, on, on the culture issues and his personal baggage, but New Hampshire is a much more moderate state than Iowa. It sure. actually is a primary. Independents can vote in Iowa. He could have competed with McCain for independent voters. Sure. Uh, it seems to me that Giuliani had a schizophrenic strategy because he th spent three million dollars in New Hampshire. I know. It's not like he didn't do anything. Right. But then when the polls showed he wasn't doing they well, panicked. and then when the polls actually showed that Romney was doing well, and then the theory was. Well, he's really doing well because he's a neighbor from Massachusetts. Let's give up on it. And then McCain did not give up on it. You know, it's, it's not conceivable that if Giuliani had competed in New Hampshire, he'd be running second and have a shot. But you never know. Reasonable. We talked about the dead. What about the Lazaruses? McCain conceivably could be a Lazarus. He's not going to do well tomorrow. But again, if you finish third, you know, or even a close fourth, and he goes in and wins... New Hampshire. New Hampshire. He should, because Rudy has failed to appear in the polls as a significant threat in New Hampshire, and should Huckabee win, and these are the variables, should Huckabee win, then the, the New Hampshire, my hunch is New Hampshire Republicans will, will slide back to McCain for one reason. They're much more middle of the role. They're much more libertarian. Not Romney. No. And they, I don't think so. And I'll well, tell you, because they wins. know him. That's, I, I that's agree with you that I think. They if, know Romney. I think. Okay. McCain, right. And they don't I like I think them. if Huckabee wins. Mm -hmm. Then I think McCain, McCain is in play. has a really good chance to win New Hampshire. And then if he wins New Hampshire, I actually think McCain would get the nomination. That's on the right. other hand, if Romney wins, I think Romney will then hold on in in New Hampshire. New Hampshire and then go and, on and, then and be the nominee. Go on which, and get the which, nomination. Now, and now I just broke one of my cardinal rules. Go ahead. Which all year when people have been asking me who's going to get the nomination, I said I don't predict presidential <laughs> nominations for what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. Because Anything it's, it's, not a, in a, it's different than a primary. In a primary, if you get the most votes, you win. Sure. 
in presidential thing, if you come in third in Iowa and second in New Hampshire, that's better than coming in second in Iowa and third, third in New, New Hampshire, Hampshire. Right. for some reason which nobody can explain. So therefore, I don't want to predict it. Now I just did. Isn't a game in baseball worth more in September than in April? I see. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I want to think about it. Of course. Okay. Now. Let's look at Clinton and, and, and Obama sure. and Edwards in the same light. If Clinton wins Iowa, even if close, doesn't that give her a tremendous a bump in, back up in New Hampshire? I think and it's then more, they carry her. I actually think it's more a defensive thing. I think mm -hmm. if she loses okay. New Hampshire... That, I mean, Iowa, that really hurts her in New Hampshire. We also uh, look at the Clintons. I mean, there's the drama. There's the, the Clinton drama. This is an ongoing, uh, was one of America's great ongoing serial programming soap operas. And it's still they, going where, on. It's going, on. It's, people have been fascinated by it for 30 and, years. And, and what will happen as well. if she loses in Iowa, it will be the great comeback kid nonsense all over again in, uh, and, in, in New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Theoretically. And she can do it. But the difference here is that the media is different than it was in 92 when Clinton went through the sure. same thing. Yeah. And the difference here is that the media is going to determine who is going to be next online, and they're going to beat her up pretty badly. So what you Because they need, because they need, because democracy need requires conflict. conflict. And they need, and conflict. They need if conflict. conflict. If it conflict. bleeds, it leads. We understand okay. the news media. Okay. So she wins Iowa. She goes into New Hampshire, wins. She's okay. She loses Iowa. Let's say to Edwards, we talked about this briefly. Does Edwards really have a shot in New Hampshire? You could make a different argument here. Go ahead. Different argument, you know, and maybe a little nutty, but then it explains, it explains Huckabee to some extent, although ultimately I think he gets caught for bigotry. And I think people don't mind being racist or bigots. They mind being found out, which is a great miracle of civil rights activity in this country. But stepping back a second, uh, most ideological voters tend to turn out in, in contests. Right. And right. the, uh, the stricture here for least ideological, for most ideological voters is not great. Therefore, you can get into it if you're an ideological person. You show up, you say, I like Huckabee because I'm an ideologue. Right. And I like Edwards if I'm an ideologue. And if that rule holds, those two people are the ones to watch. Okay. Right. You're talking about sort of intensity of preference and Correct. really be likely caucus goers. That's Correct. the problem with all these polls. They can't figure out that's, how likely That's what I'm trying to say. Goes. Nobody can Come figure on. that out. Yeah. And I mean, we, we the, touched on that in the beginning. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that, that, was, that was the variable. Doug, can you see Edwards being the nominee? I mean, you can set up a scenario, but in your gut. I think what Edwards has to do is either win or come in a real close second in, in, Iowa. in, in Iowa, but Obama, but finish ahead of Obama. Okay. And then Hillary has to win New Hampshire. And, then and therefore, Edwards could be the alternative to Clinton in the other states. He's, Edwards is not going to do well in New Hampshire. No, New Hampshire no, voters no. don't like Southern okay. candidates. Now, did, doesn't Obama have the same strategy in a sense, eliminate Edwards and then do okay in New Hampshire and then beat her in South Carolina? Aren't, aren't I think Obama has to win similar? one of those two. He's got a, he did, does he's he's got a, or a New Hampshire, win, win one of those okay. two. Uh, That'd be my guess. Well, we're setting expectations, hopefully. Um, yeah. Does he have to win? Maybe. Yeah. Has he got to be in the game? For sure. Can he be the nominee? My answer is why not? Anything can happen. I think the parties are so weak overall that anything can happen. We're not talking about real ideological issues here. We're talking about personalities that have become ideological issues, different, different kinds yeah, of Yeah, but there's something about Obama. I mean, he got something. I mean, you know, if you look at it objectively, yep. guy was a state senator three years ago. How could he be a serious candidate for president? A guy, an African-American. I mean, a little a African African -American, American American, a guy with a weird name. He obviously got something. Just like, you know, in Louisiana, they elected an Jindal. Indian right. Republican. And the more significant thing is four years ago, when he almost won, when he was like 26 years old, some candidates actually have something, you know, and we or consultants people, or can't. People. Or we people, can't create it. They got it. Or, Bill Clinton had it. No question about it. There's, and and Obama is something like that. Doesn't mean he's going to become president, but it means he's Jer a Jerry's, Jerry's right. There is it's something I learned a long time ago, early in this business, after, unfortunately, all these years. Uh, the public has to be prepared for what you are trying to sell them at a particular time. Mm -hmm. There's a, and they frame the argument based on what they're prepared to say. I think Obama is an interesting guy. Unusual, certainly has something, but he is without question more of a historical figure than not, if he's not the nominee. Why? He's right. resolving the civil rights era for us. Every candidate does something that, that's successful. Clinton resolved the Reconstruction. Obama is going to resolve the civil rights era. We're going to move forward. 
and now we have a new person to pick on, and that's Romney because he's a Mormon, you see, so it all moves around. <laughs> that's American politics. Okay, wait a minute. So I want to go to the end of January. We're in Florida. I'd like to be there the end of January. It's, it's nice weather. This I mean, it's is, cold this is here. Perfect. You know? I like, wouldn't mind being there yeah. now. Rudy sets up this quote unquote firewall. If that firewall's breached, Rudy's really hurting going into Super Duper Tuesday. Well, he, I think they even admit that they have to win Florida. Yeah, I mean, right. the, the stakes there are extraordinarily yeah. high. Now, if Rom, it seems to me if Romney begins to run the table or close, he could he, just the momentum could take him through Florida. It's the Battle of the Bulge. Go. Battle of the Bulge. Strategic argument is stop the enemy with massive force, right. even though you are overwhelmed. Right. He's got to do it. That's correct. He's got to do it. If he fails to do that, it's over. It is a very, very dangerous strategy, very clever, very gambling kind of strategy. Uh, and sometimes those strategies don't tend to pay off. Okay. But I think it's either Romney or McCain, for example. If, under my scenario... Go ahead. But if, if, Huck, if, if, if McCain wins New Hampshire and is then now... You know, McCain wins New Hampshire, the states after New Hampshire are Michigan, where... Theoretically, Romney should win, but I don't think he would. I, I think do. McCain would beat Romney. If right, if he wins yeah, New Hampshire. I think if Romney win, loses the first two states, he's, he's dead. Cooked. His cooked. Whole but he's going to continue, but he's got the bucks, and uh, he's I'm been doing sure. it for so Catholic, long. Catholic voters dominate in Michigan, and frankly... And independents can vote in Michigan. And independents can vote right. great, more Catholic. So what you have is a potential opportunity for McCain, war hero, right. as opposed to, as opposed and, to Romney, and then, so Olympic then, hero. And then right. McCain as a strong candidate in... Is McCain is a significant candidate against Giuliani in Florida. I think McCain, even with limited money, can win Florida. I yeah. agree with that, particularly when you get north of uh, the Palm Beach County line. People presume that Florida is somehow Jews and Cubans. It's yeah, not. Forget it's it. wasps. When you get past, yeah, except, for Orange, panhandle? Come except, on. except for Orange County, Orlando, which has become extraordinarily Hispanic, Puerto right. Rican particularly, why? Right. Disney said, let's everybody go to the mainland and make some money, and that's what happened. Nice. Okay. So yeah. now we've already, you know, somehow circuitously got to February 5th. People, there's two possibilities here. One is that one candidate in either or both parties has enough momentum coming in and wins big enough to basically secure the nomination. And that's that's both, we could set up scenarios both with the Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah. But there's also the possibility that you've got this very fractured series of steps where there is no real momentum that... I, Edwards wins here, Clinton wins here, Obama wins here, and likewise in the Republicans. Is it possible to have a real brokered convention? Because if you go through February 5th and you don't have a real shot at a majority here, you're going to the convention now. Do we? Is there a possibility that we'll have a convention fight? On the, Repub on the Democratic side, Ron Brown's dead. Who's the broker? That's true. That's there true. There is no broker. There is no broker. So wh what happens? What happens? They don't have a majority. What do they do? Just wheel and deal and we don't know. We, so you haven't had a situation like this. And the Democrats, I can't remember. In, 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 um, since probably the, the, the late 50s from the Democrats, we've had a brokered convention in that way. Yeah. Except yeah. Bill of, no, six, 68, well, I that was, was a broker. That, 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 that doesn't, that's, that's, yeah. that's pathological. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is pathological. In 76 with the, the Republicans rules, with Reagan. The, the new and, rules changed everything, you know. Yeah, that's right, the McGovern. Go uh, ahead. You know. It's possible, but I, you know, since it hasn't happened in so many years, I don't think it's likely. I think, I think it's likely that someone will be the front runner, and whoever is the front runner will win the majority of the states on Super Tuesday, okay. and, and then just carry it through. To carry it through, but you know, stranger things have happened. I just can't think of too many. Okay, <laughs> now talking about strange things and perfect storms. In New York, anyway, also in the national media over the last couple of days, who's dominated the news cycle? Michael Bloomberg. What? The, first of all, third party. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you're both historians, one a, uh, sort of a professional and one, a, one an amateur. Come on, third party and second, Mike Bloomberg. Van Buren. <laughs> with, with the 1836 election, what? What? Tell me. Well, I, look, I think that you have a similar set of trends. Um, we're going through an extraordinarily unique and difficult time in American political history. And this could be a critical Glo election. That's, I believe this is a critical election. I think globalization, the destruction of the auto industry and the things related to it, the culture attended to it, 
are very, very, very significant. Uh, now my theory has always been that Sadat could go to Jerusalem, Nixon could go to China, and only Bloomberg could go to Detroit. Uh, a billionaire can make the issue very, very, okay. very, very well. And it is about jobs. I said uh, in other public outings for the last year that the issue in 2008 would not be the war, the it would be the economy uh -huh. and the massive changes in it. And Bloomberg represents, uh, because of his own success, and Americans tend to like generals and businessmen. So you think Bloomberg, if, if he should choose to run and the conditions were right, condition, the what condition, are the conditions? The, no McCain, no Giuliani. And no Hillary. Uh, I think that that's not the issue. Okay. The argument that people have is that she has such high negatives. Well, let's be honest. In a two-party contest, everybody has a 50% negative. Right. Okay. I mean, if it's but Huckabee... But in a three-party contest... Right, it's different. It's different. Yeah, the mathematics okay. are different. Mathematics are different. Can he be competitive with her in California? Can he be competitive with her in, in the Midwest? I have, a, I have a question. Sure. 270. How does he get 270 yeah, I don't, electoral I don't, I don't, votes? I, not only don't I see how he can... I don't even see how anyone could convince him that he can, and that's why I don't think... He's, he's not going to do it. He's a smart guy. Uh -huh. He's not... Uh, for your younger viewers out there, used to have this guy, Abe Hirschfeld, who was also a millionaire. He wasn't a billionaire. He was a millionaire. He used mm -hmm. to run for office because he was stupid, and, you know, people convinced him he could win. Uh, but and I, I told him he Mike never Bloomberg could. Mike is not problem. stupid. What? I never made any money from him. I, told <laughs> I him he actually did make him. a little. Oh, okay. Uh, but the first year I was a consultant. But uh, he ran for lieutenant governor, you know, against who the governor wants. I run. I but, told him not to do that. Uh, you know, but I'm saying other people suckered him into spending money. Uh, I was, I was already brought on after he already sucked it in. I wasn't okay, go ahead. But anyway, Mike Bloomberg is not Abe Hirschfeld. Mike and he's, and he's not guy. Ross Perot either. He's, he's, he's not a smart guy. He's, he is a smart guy, and he didn't make his billions by doing something hmm. that I agree was you. not empirically possible. I agree And I just don't think it's empirically possible. And I, don't, I, I personally don't think he's even really even good. Look, does he want to be president? Of course. Yeah. But is it good I think for he Zero? knows he can. Yeah. I think he knows he can, and I think his people would just playing the media, they just want the attention. If, million, if millions of people run down the street screaming your name, it's hard not to pay attention. And, and, and loving it. Okay, we've got a couple of seconds. Ultimate Democratic nominee, put it on the line. Hillary. I want to go back to my original thing. I'm refusing to predict who gets okay. the nomination. Republican. <laughs> my bet? McCain. McCain. I thought so. You're, Same thing. you're sticking with it? Like, well, once I say well, one, I got to say with the other. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and I think then there's no Bloomberg, and uh, my bet, my money then is 50-50. Yeah, I agree. And Excellent. I think the Democrats are not as, as well positioned as they think they are. Excellent. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.